Hello everybody, welcome to the second practice viva examination case. We're going to be having a look at this chest radiograph today and I encourage you now to pause the video and make your own concise summary, confidently state the positive and negative findings that you feel are relevant to this case and then I'm going to share with you my summary uh, as well as a list of differentials and we can compare ours to one another. Now again, I'm not an expert and my summaries are not perfect and there are multiple ways to skin a cat so your approach might be completely different to mine. And that's all right as long as we're coming to hopefully similar conclusions. So I would go about this case by starting and saying this is an erect mobile chest radiograph of a skeletally mature male who's presenting with acute onset shortness of breath. The major uh, abnormality that's evident is diffuse patchy bilateral airspace of pacifications that are taking up the entire left and right hemothoraces. There's evidence of interstitial edema with uh, interlobular septal thickening or curly B lines evident here as well as alveolar edema with these nodular opacities and diffuse bilateral airspace opacities throughout the lung fields. There's also a left-sided pleural effusion as well as potentially some blunting of this right costophrenic angle. Now given the erect projection and likely AP projection, I'm unable to comment on the size of the heart. There's um, no evidence of previous cardiovascular or cardiothoracic surgery, and the patient is not intubated. So these findings, given the presentation, are most likely in keeping with acute pulmonary edema, which in itself is most commonly secondary to a cardiogenic cause. Uh, whether that be congestive cardiac failure or fluid overload. Uh, if I was to discuss this with the requesting clinician to get some more clinical history to maybe narrow down my differentials, other differentials that I should consider here are infection or pneumonia as well as acute respiratory distress syndrome or other non-cardiogenic causes of acute pulmonary edema. And I would leave it there and allow the examiner then to ask me some questions and take it further. If I've missed anything, they can kind of uh, push me in the right direction. So for me, this case comes down to having an approach to um, bilateral opacification in the chest or diffuse bilateral opacifications. And generally, you're kind of trying to distinguish bet between acute pulmonary edema or infection or ARDS. And you can look for features radiographically to help distinguish those. Is there a pleural effusion? Is the heart enlarged? What's the distribution of the um, opacification? Is there evidence of redistribution of blood within the, um, in the uh, lung fields? Is there upper lobe uh, diversion of pulmonary vasculature? And those kind of subtle radiological signs can help you pin your diagnosis, you know, sway you more towards pulmonary edema versus infection and vice versa. But obviously the clinical information, the history from the patient and the clinical signs are gonna make a massive difference as to what the diagnosis actually is. So I hope that my uh, summary is somewhat similar to yours, at least coming to a similar conclusion. Uh, if you've enjoyed these sessions, you can check out when the next video is ready. It's gonna be linked there is case number three. Otherwise you can see my approach to congestive cardiac failure, which will also be linked up there, go check it out. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next case. Goodbye, everybody.